Excellent! Keyboards are ubiquitous, which is probably why some people are just so damn particular about theirs. We've gone from the $15 rubber dome keyboard days 10 plus years ago to the landscape we have now with a dizzying array of mechanical switch keyboards that promise increased durability, slightly faster actuation time, and a range of color-coded clickiness options that segments everyone's preferences even further. Most will agree though that Cherry makes the best mass-produced traditional mechanical switches, and that while expensive, typing away on a full mechanical keyboard with your switches of choice, I happen to like browns, is a deeply satisfying feeling. Today we're going to take a look at two brand new keyboards from Cooler Master. This is the Master Keys Pro L and S, combining the long-awaited features of a Cooler Master design keyboard, genuine Cherry MX switches, and the near-infinite customizability of per-key RGB backlighting. So these boards are both pretty similar apart from their size. The Pro S and L means small and large as far as I can tell, with the S being 10 keyless and the L being full sized. Packaging is very well done and each board comes with a manual, a nice little keycap puller and a braided 1.5 meter micro USB to USB type A cable. I can't say I'm loving the decision to stick with micro USB here on the keyboard side though. It's just not as sturdy of a connector, uh, but the Pro S does get an angled plug to keep it from sticking out too much. And the Pro L has underboard cable routing channels so you can make that cable come out either in the middle or on the left or the right side. The keyboards themselves are simple and straightforward design-wise in the best sort of way. Cooler Master gets a ton of credit for this already, and rightfully so, in that the boards don't seem to have more flair than they need. They are simple rectangles built around the keys with subtly rounded edges, a nice finish on the housing, and the weight and build quality of a frickin' tank. The weight of these boards is an indication of Cooler Master continuing to do keyboards right. Much as I did with the Quickfire series, it's got a metal internal frame and a very solid feeling sitting on the desk as you type. Actually, the housing appears to be the exact same design that they used for the Quickfire Rapid, Rapid Eye, at least for the Master Keys S here. Uh, so fans of the Rapid Eye can now get it in RGB trim. So let's talk features before I dive into an LED lighting demo, starting with the RGB LEDs themselves, of course, which, like all RGB LEDs that I've seen advertised, can do 16.7 million colors. I was not able to independently verify this color range as I do not have a spectrophotometer. Also, now I have looked up and found out what a spectrophotometer is. Let's just say I was not unsatisfied with the variety of color combinations or brightness options available. And I think you'll be able to get it to represent any color you damn well please with the possible exception of pure white. All RGB LED solutions I have seen have trouble recreating pure white with a slight bluish tint that's uh, perceptible and mostly only noticeable if you compare it to a pure white LED side by side. As for switch options though, I have Cherry MX reds and browns both represented here, and I'm told that Cooler Master will have MX blue versions available in the future as well. The boards feature 100% anti-ghosting with N key rollover, and you don't even have to use a switch to go between 6 key or N key rollover modes, as the board will automatically detect when you press more than 6 keys at once and switch on the fly for you. This function, as well as the robust on-the-fly programming capabilities for the RGB LEDs, are handled by the embedded 72 MHz ARM Cortex M3 processor, which Cooler Master says is 25% faster than that stupid old Cortex M0 that they used to use. The keycaps themselves have a UV coating to keep them looking new and shiny as long as possible, and the text on most of the keycaps is up at the top so that the RGB LEDs behind them can shine through. The function keys and number keys along the top row do have an upper and lower character on each keycap, so the lower character is noticeably dimmer due to the proximity of the RGB LEDs. The LEDs themselves, though, are bigger than other Cherry MX RGB LED switches because Cooler Master redesigned the housing around each switch to provide more space for the three LED array that goes beneath each one. I compared this to the single LED solution on my Quickfire Rapid Eye, and the area of illumination is definitely much larger on the uh, Pro L and Pro S. This, combined with Cooler Master's continued use of a white baseboard beneath the keys, makes those colors really pop. It's not just the keycap characters that are lit up, but you also get sort of a nice aura lighting effect beneath all the keys and everything. Pretty cool. Rounding out functions and transitioning to that LED lighting demo, the top row of function keys gives you on-the-fly access to RGB lighting. Uh, you also get 10 levels of brightness to cycle through for each one. 
The mode button next to that switches between color wave, breathing, and different typing effects that are available. F5 to F8 can help you adjust your repeat rate, which you didn't even know you needed until now. Uh, F9 lets you lock your Windows key, which is super helpful if you're going to be doing some PC gaming. F10 engages LED programming mode. F11 and F12 are for recording and deleting macros. And then to the right of those are function keys for toggling synchro macros, macro on off, or macro looping. Function plus escape, if you hit those together, will dis quickly disable all the macros on the keyboard so you, if you need to get some work done, they won't be a distraction for you. And then uh, there's also a grouping of six media control keys right below those. Finally, on the top right of the Pro L are four profile keys so you can save and switch between four profiles. On the Pro S, those four profile keys are on the number keys one through four. Finally, if you hold down the function key, uh, you'll get a little bit of a flash that shows you really quickly which profile you're currently using. And uh, once you're in LED mode, you can use these uh, LED switch buttons, tapping them each to cycle through each brightness level. So zero through nine basically goes brighter and brighter and brighter and then resets. Uh, you can even tap them individually to sort of combine different brightness levels of red, green, and blue to get yourself orange or purple or yellow, for example. There's a bit of a learning curve to this on the fly recording, but once you kind of figure it out, it is a very robust means of controlling RGB lighting without needing any software. You probably will want to try out the Cooler Master software though, as it is a little bit more user friendly, so let's take a look at that next. So I now have the Cooler Master software loaded up, it installed fairly quickly, it was able to recognize my attached Master Keys keyboard, and it uh, quickly updated the firmware as well, which is also nice to have. So on the bottom, what you're looking at here is the actual keyboard, and on the top is the software. I have compressed it down a little bit so you can see everything. But as you can see, there's two main tabs up at the top. We got LED and we got library. So um, library is just a library of profiles. So if you create a profile and you really like it, you can just uh, hit over to there and you can save it. You can even import or export them so you can save them uh, to a file or something like that. Over on the LED side is where we can actually manipulate stuff. So obviously at the bottom, you got four profiles. I, I'm just gonna be working with profile one. And then we have the whole keyboard up here. If you mouse over any of the keys, it will give you an RGB indicator of what color it's currently set to. Uh, and then LED mode down here, we have different options. So right now it's on static, all white. Of course, we have the color wave option, which I've been using a lot during the course of this uh, demonstration. Cross mode just is a reactive typing mode. So as you hit a key, it will give you, well, it'll give me a, a little error at first because doesn't like what I'm pushing, but gives you the cross mode across all the keys, which is kind of cool. Single key is just a single key reactive typing, so it'll light up each key as you type it. Great for letting people know what your password is. So in the customize area, you can of course customize. You can choose any color you want from uh, the color grid over here, the slider. You can just indicate RGB values. And uh, this is kind of fun because you can either indicate individual keys that you want to change color and they should light up as you click them. Or, uh, if you want to be super fancy, you can click and drag and you can get like whole banks of colors all at the same time. So, if you want to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like a, what, what country's flag is this? I have no idea. Probably some country's flag. Look there, it's beautiful. Okay, uh, moving on, we have a star effect that we can enable, which um, will do like a, a field of stars. It's just kind of a, an effect that will be there all the time, even while you're not typing. We have raindrop effect, which will rain Rain drops down, wow, it's coming down. Rain's coming down pretty hard right now. Uh, that's kind of nice too. Color cycle will just automatically cycle between a bunch of different colors very slowly, as you can see. Uh, and you can adjust the uh, speed with which it does that over here. So faster or slower, of course. Uh, and then of course we have breathe, which will just breathe on and off, super nice. Ripple effect, which will do an, an outward ripple wherever you type, which is also one of those kind of cool typing effects that you can do. And then uh, multi-layer, which I haven't quite figured out. This appears to allow you to integrate multiple effects um, with a single setting. Um, so I was able to set all these up. You can click on this and then change it over here. I'm guessing this will allow you to quickly cycle between the different modes. If you put a multi-layer on, you just do your favorite modes in there. You have the snake game, which is super fun. So here I'm actually going to use the, uh, the keyboard up and down arrows to play snake. You can see the snake has a red head and uh, you're trying to go after the green apples. Once you eat the green apples, then they reappear. And then the more you eat, the longer the snake gets. You guys have played this game, right? You guys have Nokia phones. I imagine this game you could play even without it being connected to a, a computer if you just had like USB power. So, you know, bring this to an airport and then you have loads of fun just playing snake. Anyway, enough of that. 
Okay, system status is kind of fun. This will uh, give you a visual representation of your CPU load. I'm using about 10 to 30 percent, so it's giving me all numbers down here in the bottom. If I put a full load on it, you get more uh, indicators of, of stuff higher up. It's kind of fun. Uh, and then finally we have, uh, oh wait, no, for system status we also have equalizer. So you can combine this with like music playing, which I can maybe do over here really quick. Uh, yeah, so now I got some music playing, although you guys probably can't hear it. Um, but yeah, now as the music plays, you get a little equalizer effect that goes on the keyboard too. And then of course, lastly, we have off. If you just, if you hate your RGB LEDs, turn them off. So overall, I think Cooler Master has given fans exactly what they wanted with the Master Keys Pro series. You've got 10 keyless and full size options available. They both use genuine Cherry MX keys and they have a design that's clean and elegant with very solid build quality, which is what Cooler Master is really known for. I like the option to control the RGB LEDs via software or use the on-the-fly built-in control options. And I think Cooler Master has the right switch options available at launch with MX Browns right out of the gate, reds and blues also coming soon. My complaints would start with the micro USB plug as a type C connector, I think would have been a better choice here. The pricing is also a little tough to swallow with the Pro L costing 170 US dollars and the Pro S coming in at 140. This isn't too far out of line with other Cherry MX RGB keyboards in this class, but it is a premium price point. Finally, if there was a feature I could add, it would be a USB pass-through. That is a feature that I have just found infinitely useful in keyboards that have it. In fact, that is how this keyboard is plugged in right now via that keyboard over there. Anyway, the Master Keys Pro L should be available right now, and I will link this one down in the video description. I'm also told the Master Keys Pro S will be available in three to four weeks, so if you're a 10 keyless fan, you do have to wait just a little bit longer. And again, brown switches available right now uh, with reds and blues still to come. That's all for this review though. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoyed it, don't forget to softly caress that like button with a gentle mouse click. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon link, which is down there in the description. You click that before you shop for stuff on Amazon. That helps me a lot. Or feel free to visit my store at store.paulshardware.net, where you can also support me by picking up a shirt or a mug or a pint glass. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more tech videos. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Oh no, I'm covering my logo. Wait, I have to burp. There's a bug again. Blech, blech.